Hello everybody, welcome back to Let's Play <clears throat> Fallout 1. Oh my goodness, have we got an episode today. Whoa. Uh, never! Oh my goodness, he's gonna blast us. Oh, God, my crotch. Not the crotch. Right in the eyes. Oh, uh, that ain't your eyes, that's your... Your dancing hips. I don't know. It's in the combat and go down this way. His name was Flip, by the way. For some reason, he had a he had a name. Usually, it's just Huge Mutant. Oh God, Crupper. So this guy has a name too. All right. The eyes. By the way, these guys are carrying laser rifles, which are pretty darn dangerous. If you ask me. Oh shit, he knows we're here. Uh oh. So we can end combat. Nope, not yet. Um, alright, let's, uh... What is... Who is stupid enough to anger us? I don't know, probably me. <laughs> don't tell anybody, though. I don't want it to be me. I don't want to be that guy. Who's this? Oh my god, you killed him. Uh, I'm sorry, I didn't know he was so close to you. He was my lover. He was my best friend. I can't believe that you did that to him. Again, I apologize. How could I tell that he meant so much to you? Look at him. He's a mutant. He was a human being. The only way he could survive was by being dipped. You killed him. Uh, sorry. You didn't have to kill him, sir. So leave me alone. <laughs> you have to kill him. <laughs> you see a force field emitter. Hmm. Think and study for a while. Let's see if we can science this. This this one isn't broken. Hmm. I have a bad feeling about this. All right, let's see. Can we repair this stuff? No. Hmm. Okay, well, let's keep going. Actually, you know what? Let's look at this one down here. See if there's... I do not see a control panel on this emitter. Hmm. Okay, well, that's weird. Hopefully that won't come back to bite us on the ass. Okay. Oh, holy crap, they got a Mr. Handy. Uh, let's just keep going. Oh, and Robo brains out the wazoo. That's not good either. Oh, who's that? That was the lieutenant. The lieutenant. With the children, with the child of the cathedral. The children of the cathedral. Please don't kill me, I only work here. Yeah, well, you're about to die here. Just, just letting you know. Let's uh, check out this little terminal here. Try to use the computer, but I'm unable to get any information out of it. Let's get us a save before we start sciencing the join up. And yes, I just saved over a slot where I was practicing. Of course. Alright, you tinker and study. You managed to get an interface screen. Alright, good deal. It's a bats control computer, by the way. Machine words and clicks followed by a loud beep. Access granted. Continue. Command. Dis uh, search logs. Now let's <clears throat> specify the log you would like to review. Gray. Download log of Richard Gray. Yes. Continue. Alright. Let's, uh, let's check that out. Richard Gray Audio Diary. I'm dying. I need to get this down before the pain overwhelms me. <laughs> I can't believe that. I was finally able to drag myself out of that vat. The slime did not affect me, but I nearly drowned. So this is Richard Gray, huh? Isn't this the guy that... Wait a second. Isn't this the guy Harold was talking about? Yeah, holy crap, this is the information about Richard Gray. Maybe we could go see Harold after this. Slime did not affect me, but I nearly drowned. I know 
I don't know what happened to Harold. He was standing right next to me when the crane knocked me into the vat. He must have been killed or he would have tried to help me. Francis is dead. Killed by one of those robots. I have no idea how much time has passed. I was able to hack the computer to turn off the robots and record this. Now my mind is slipping away. There's, so, there's much pain. The green slime that I was immersed in is the source of all the mutations we trace to here. My skin is to fester and peel. In other areas, it is bubbling and starting expelling a green mucus-like substance. Some days the pain is almost tolerable. I can actually walk a few steps again. It seems inconceivable that I drag myself all the way up here from the vat room. Strangely, I'm actually feeling stronger, though I'm still in a lot of pain. Everything seems to be getting smaller. <laughs> I think I consumed one of the mutated things scurrying around here today. Before I knew what was happening, some sort of tendril had sprung from my stomach and covered the poor creature. As soon as it had sucked the rodent into my gut, I felt I could actually feel its mind, I think. There is, there is the very real possibility that I'm going slowly insane and can no longer differentiate between what is real and what is a hallucination, but I'm still slowly dying in the bat, and I've imagined all this. Things are becoming very clear to me every day. This toxin has actually improved my mind. I feel that I can understand even the most complex philosophical questions simply and directly. It's as if all the layers of... <clears throat> artifice have been stripped away. I wonder what would happen if I submerged an animal in the vats for a prolonged period of time. Would it gain awareness? <coughs> Excuse me. The strangest thing is happening to the animals. The strangest thing is happening to the animals. They actually become smarter and more aware of their surroundings. I dipped a dog and a rat at the same time today and they were fused together. It's not quite two creatures anymore but it's more than one. Perhaps this is the future, a coming together of different species, uh, creatures in some sort of harmonious unity. I no longer consume the, the different animals I create simply for sustenance. <laughs> that's, that's weird. I have become the instrument through which unity will be achieved. I am so much more than a human being now. It is time to bring others into the glory that is the unity. Oh my god. A lost soul has finally strayed into my home. I was so surprised I consumed him before dipping. A mistake I shall not make again. Ugh. His mind was so primitive as to be repulsive to my refined cognitive abilities. I began to modify myself to be more pleasing to the unity by injecting small doses of the virus into my body. The slime of the bats is a man-made virus. <laughs> Sorry, my allergies are really bad today. Uh, the slime in the bats is a man-made virus called the forest evolutionary virus. This information was acquired from my newly grown Neuralink with the base computer. The few wanderers that have found their way through here have been a disappointment to me. They can't seem to mutate correctly. The best I've been able to create are some big and dumb mutants. Most can recall nothing from before I initiated them into the wondrous unity. I only feed on them for, no, or for fuel. Now their minds are nothing to me. O oh, glorious creator, I have succeeded in spreading the complete joy of unification to another soul. Unlike the others, his total radiation count was low. I believe this is the factor we have been overlooking all this time. As it seems, the conversion is more successful in the cases with less radiation damage. I have never known such glory as I felt when, talking, when taking his mind into our own. We are beginning to create an army dedicated to unifying the wonderful diversity of life. We have trained them to continue their work here while we search out more populated areas to take into ourselves. We are beginning to feel the limitations of a body that is mobile. We must find a permanent home with a greater store of knowledge and a steady supply of biomass. We have stopped increasing ourselves until we can find this new unification center. When we have arrived, we will continue to grow and feed until we have brought peace and unity to the entire world. That's pretty interesting. Really, really interesting. So that's what happened to Richard Gray. He became some kind of, like, godlike thing. Okay, let's keep looking. 
continue. Search logs. Oyarski. Unexpected end of line bad data encountered. Okay, search log. Maxon. Downloading log of Captain Maxon. Yes. Command completed successfully. Alright. Exit system. Captain Maxon's diary. I, October 10th, 2077. I, Roger Maxon, Captain, serial number 072389, have started this log because it doesn't look good for any of us. And I'd like for people to know what really happened here. All hell broke loose when we finally discovered what those scientist bastards were up to. The colonel has locked himself in his office and seems to be having some sort of breakdown. The men are screaming for blood. They're looking for me to to me for answers, and I'm not sure what to do. Someone has to do something, though, before this place sinks into an anarchistic bloodbath. October 12th, 2077. Every time we get a report from higher up, things get worse here. The war is going in a very bad direction, and this place is about to go into full mutiny. With all the chaos that entails, I stopped one of the men from executing a scientist today and demanded that we interrogate them to find out what their orders were. I killed a man today. I was interrogating a chief scientist, Anderson, and he was giving me the full details of their inhuman experiments. He said his orders came from the government, but I didn't buy it. He started screaming about how he was following orders, how he was a military man, and I just shot him. I tell myself it was to keep him from causing a full mutiny a, f a full mutiny among the men, but I'm not so sure. October 15th, 2077. I tried again to speak to the colonel through the door, but he seems to have completely lost touch with reality. I broke down the door and several of my men just in time to watch him blow his own head off. Right before he... pulled the trigger, he said he was sorry. October 18th, 2077. <clears throat> By killing the egghead, I seem to have confirmed my position as leader of the men. They follow me without question now. The interrogations invariably ended, end up being executions. Shillman held out the longest, but the end result was the same. Her argument about her orders were a bit too specific to be completely made up. I'm getting a real bad feeling in my gut about this is about how this is all going to end up. I don't even lie to myself anymore about my reasons for executing the scientists. October 20th, 2077. I finally replied to the outside world near our radio. I don't know why they never sent anyone up here, anyone here to see what was happening when we stopped responding to the transmissions. It doesn't make any sense. Well, they'll come now. I declared ourselves seceded from the Union. They remember Jefferson Davis. What what will history say about me? October 22nd, 2077. What the hell is going on? We declare ourselves to be in full desertion from the army and no longer under the government's command. And what happens? Nothing. Something bad is coming down. October 23rd, 2077. I can't believe those bastards finally did it. Damn them all to hell. They finally let the A-bombs fly. We were right in the middle of trying to pry the real story out of Von Felden when we completely lost contact. I have a feeling the research center was hit hard. I don't know why, just call it a gut feeling. It seems inconceivable that we were not targeted. I'm sure China will make up for the oversight real soon. Luckily, we had moved our families from outside into the facility the day before yesterday. We do not know, we do not yet know if the fallout has reached this area. October 25th, 2077. Sergeant Plattner volunteered to go outside today to take a, to take specific readings on the atmosphere. It seems the radiation is not spread this far. Since he was wearing his, ra his power armor, there was no threat to him from radiation. But if he had been exposed, he would have had to be exiled. We don't have adequate de decontamination facilities here. Well, that sucks. October 26th, 2077. 2077. Ugh, sorry, so much reading. <coughs> Excuse me. 
I can convinced, I almost said conceived, I convinced the men that we should bury the scientists. I don't know why. Perhaps it was to ease my conscience. I finally started to believe their stories when the last one was dying. My God, what have I become? October 27th, 2077. We're leaving this God for second place today. I'm leading the exodus to the old government bunker in Lost Hills. I'm leaving the log behind to be buried when this place goes in the next exchange. Who knows, maybe someone will find it someday. Okay, so let me get a drink here. Whew. I think we got one more to go, I'm not for sure. Ugh. Continue. Search logs. Anderson. Unexpected end of line. Bad data encounter. Thank God. <laughs> okay, so I believe that's going to be this episode. Uh, it's a long one. Uh, and there's some stuff I've got to work out for the next episode. I have no idea how it's going to go. But we're going to use this computer next time to do something very, very secret. And uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. There's uh, some annotations after the video is over. Uh, check them out. Click on the link that you like best, that you want to see some other stuff that I've done. And uh, at the beginning of each episode, in the top right corner, there's an I. And it shows up for a very brief few seconds. And it take you to another playlist or video of my choosing. And uh, it might still be there if you want to check out what that is. Anyways, I hope you guys have enjoyed this episode. And I'll see you guys in the next part. Bye. Your sides and a small child can stack you. <laughs> the Queen Derizia. Out, bitches. <laughs> you weak, pathetic fools. I'll swallow your souls. What is your name, young pig?